They say you can't make an omelette without breaking a few eggs, but it's equally true that you can't be a video game hero without ruining the lives of a few random bystanders. At least that's the way it seems when you consider how these video game heroes destroyed these people's homes, livelihoods, and skeletons, whether for the greater good or just because they thought it'd be a laugh, Kratos. Here are seven of the most egregious examples. Enjoy and beware spoilers ahead for the following games. Lines we don't cross. The world's changed since Metropolis. No, it hasn't. You have. Begin. Bibbo Bibowski is a character from the DC Comics universe who is already having a bad time on account of being called Bibbo Bibowski. Things are even worse than that, however, because Bibbo owns the ASO Clubs Bar. This is a drinking establishment that would be a nice relaxed place to have a couple of drinks in if it weren't for the constant super-powered fistfights taking place there in Injustice 2. For a start, these rowdy metahumans seem dead set on trashing everything of value in the place, smashing all of Bibbo's quirky decor, including his antique diving helmet, TV, and a jukebox that can't be worth less than 10 grand. Worst of all, though, is the structural damage, when Superman or whoever punches people through the saloon's original brick walls for 25% damage to his opponent and a four-figure repair bill for poor old Bibbo. Ooh, make that five figures. Man, that's a hefty bill, Bibbo. I hope you can sell enough beer to make up the shortfall. Ah, oh well, I guess the bar dream is over. But hey, this is Metropolis. There are probably plenty more jobs you can do. There's a metro station next door. Maybe you can be a train driver. Okay, maybe not a train driver. We're looking for something to steal. Sir, I stole a pencil in elementary school and I've been regretting it ever since. Floyd always worth a stick in the mug. Floyd Herbert is the closest thing the cast of Grand Theft Auto V has to a nice person. Obviously, he had to suffer. Before the events of Grand Theft Auto V, Floyd is doing pretty well for himself. He lives in a nice apartment near Vespucci Beach, is engaged to a successful lawyer called Deborah, and has a steady job at a shipyard. Then Trevor Phillips shows up pretty much at random because he knows Floyd's juggalo cousin, Wade. Floyd, it's me, Wade! Who? Me, Wade, your cousin! Who? Your cousin! <laughs> He's come to visit you, you rude <laughs> Now get up off the floor and fix me a drink. Trevor moves into Floyd's apartment and begins systematically destroying his life, wrecking his furniture, roping him into his criminal schemes, and forming a disturbing relationship with his beloved teddy bear, Mr. Raspberry Jam. Whoa! Whoa! Now Mr. Raspberry Jam, he died a noble death, bringing great joy to a lonely man. You might argue that this relationship is good for Floyd, as it makes him stand up for himself and finally become much more assertive. Hey, my G-damn cousin, Trevor. I thought we was family. But please, just go and ruin somebody else's home furnishings. Which would be great if Trevor didn't then immediately kill him. Mm, hey there, Wade. Did you meet Gebra? Interesting lady. I should probably go say hi. I wouldn't. Why not? Let's go get in the car, all right? Let's go have the time of our lives. At least Mr. Raspberry Jam survives. Yes, it's as a hood ornament for Trevor's car, but I mean, when it's Trevor we're talking about, you say what you can get. Mr. Dexter, he shot out the camera in the elevator. Coming our way. Agent 47 is a man of very few words, and 90% of those words are Diana or I, your birthday clown, am here. Well, cheers to you, Goofy. This legendary assassin pays a high price for being legendarily tight-lipped. It makes meeting new people very difficult, and he can't make Alexa do anything. But no one pays a higher price than the sushi delivery guy who Agent 47 meets on his way up to the penthouse of the Blackwater Park building in Chicago. This delivery professional is having a really stressful day. It's not number 55 on the 22nd floor, it's number 22 on its number 25, it's number 55 on the second floor, Jesus! <sighs> 
What's wrong with me, huh? You think I got dyslexia? Oh, God! Or you think I'm just stupid? Man, I'm probably just stupid. That's what my mom would say, just stupid. And some issues with his mum, apparently. He's got his own problems, 47, is what I'm saying. And it's not like Agent 47 doesn't already have innocent blood on his hands, at least the way we play him. But if he could just have spoken up this one time and told the delivery guy to step off a floor early, this would never have happened. Now, the innocent, stressed out delivery dude with the unresolved family conflict is splattered all over the walls of the elevator for one. Yeah, it's just the sushi guy. Who ordered sushi? Miss Stockton did. And for two, someone's not getting their sushi dinner. Jesus, pick up the sushi and see Miss Stockton gets it. Oh, right, that's right. I forgot the other five second rule, which is if you wipe most of the blood spatter off within the first five seconds, it's still good to eat. You told me that was ketchup. Yeah, well, you got a free hamburger, so quit complaining. Get them away from the ship! Why won't they die? It's the giant one! He keeps killing the others! Ah! No, I... God! We'll never get out of here! Doomed! We're doomed! We're all... It's a good idea not to get on the wrong side of Kratos from the God of War series on account of him having what could charitably be described as anger management issues and also two massive swords. Of course that's easier said than done as apparently just having the sheer nerve to be eaten by a hydra when Kratos is fighting it is enough to get into the son of Sparta's bad books. That's the position in which the sea captain from God of War finds himself in a series of events that must surely be in contention for the worst day anyone has ever had award. Firstly, his ship is attacked by the Hydra, which is already going to give anyone a case of the Mondays. Then he gets swallowed by the Hydra, at which point Kratos comes after him, not to rescue him as the captain first thinks, but to steal his key because he needs it for later. Thank you! Thank the gods you came back for me! I didn't come back for you. No! Yeah, that'll teach you to get swallowed by a Hydra where I can see it, you idiot. If you think the worst is over for the sea captain just because he's been eaten by a mythical dragon monster, think again, because later in the game, Kratos finds himself falling into Hades and saving himself by grabbing onto the dangling legs of another doomed soul. That doomed soul being, of course, the unlucky sea captain who he killed earlier. Naturally, Kratos, upon seeing the results of his actions, immediately feels remorse and helps the captain up so they can escape together. Ha! <laughs> Only joking, he stabs him and throws him into hell for a laugh. Let go, fool! You won't drag me down to that cursed river! There is a task left for me above. Ah! I will see it completed. You again? Go! Oh. At least that is surely it for the sea captain's misfortunes. I mean, after being eaten and thrown into hell, at least he doesn't have to worry about Kratos anymore. Am I wrong? I am wrong. The captain turns up again in God of War 2, where his soul is summoned during Kratos' fight with the Barbarian King, so he can get killed by Kratos a second time just to rub it in. Oh no! Not you again! Wow, tough break, Sea Captain. Hey, at least you've still got that Worst Day Ever award, am I right? Wait. No, I'm, I'm just hearing that the award is actually going to Kratos for that day when he accidentally killed his entire family. Sorry, Sea Captain. Yeah? What do you want? Information. Then go bother the receptionist, Chrome Boy, instead of wasting my goddamn time. You may well have completed a squeaky clean pacifist playthrough of Deus Ex Human Revolution, but your Adam Jensen has been ruining life since well before you arrived on the scene. Yeah, yeah, hang on just a sec. Jensen? Case in point, here's Jensen's former police colleague, Wayne Hass, currently a pencil-pushing desk sergeant at the precinct police station. They still have pencils to push in the future, right? You know, space pencils. Wayne used to be a high-achieving SWAT team member, but he crashed out of that job and has been a guilt-riddled, painkiller-addicted nervous wreck since he shot an augmented teenager in the line of duty. Yeah, I killed a kid. He was augmented. He was a threat. That's what you do! For the record, Wayne, any sentence that starts, yeah, I killed the kid, is going to be a hard sell. But the reason Hass was forced to shoot a child back then was because Adam Jensen refused a direct order to do exactly that, passing the buck to Hass. You were in command, but when they told you to take the shot, you refused. 
Still, Wayne, did you ever think how Adam's life might have been ruined if he'd had to shoot a 15-year-old? So inconsiderate. Haas blames all his misfortune on Jensen and things don't improve much in Human Revolution. When Adam shows up at the police station asking Wayne if he can break into the morgue and steal something out of someone's skull. I know it's a risk for you, but I really do need to get into that morgue. When police top brass find out Adam Jensen sweet-talked his way past the desk sergeant, poor old Wayne is out of yet another job thanks to his jerk former colleague. They found out I let you into the morgue, that's what happened. They canned me. This guy is never going to get those wasted years of his life back, of course, but you can try and make amends by offering him a third job, which is a cushy security position at Sarif Industries in the world's most casual job interview. Corporate security pays more than being a cop. Or you could alternatively... How are you going to be security if you can't even secure your own head? This job interview's over. You followed me. You need me here. Has anyone ever agreed with that statement? Round one, fight! In Mortal Kombat X, Blanche is both the name of the old lady bystander found in the Outworld Marketplace stage, and also what you will do when you see what the Mortal Combatants do to her when fighting there. That's because none of the fighters will think twice about picking up a little old lady who's just trying to get some shopping done and flinging her at their supernatural bodybuilder opponent for a frankly insulting amount of damage. Things are already probably pretty bad for her if she has to do her shopping at the Outworld Market, what with all the baking heat and terrifying monsters lying around. The last thing she needs when she's just trying to pick up some fruit is for a lightning god to pick her up and chuck her at the star of Ninja Mime. I didn't even like that movie. To Blanche's credit, she doesn't let that put her off going back to the marketplace. That's one tough old lady. I'd watch it if I were you, Raiden. I reckon Blanche could give you a pretty stern telling off if pushed. Do you need it? Kenshi wins. Wow, that's that's more than I was expecting, Blanche. L let me get that fruit for you. Suck on that. A few years ago, this broken ass system marked me as a criminal risk. Linked me to some shit I didn't even do because it was probable. Once in the system, always in the system. The amount of personal data that thing is collecting is mind blowing. Violating the public trust, manipulating the stock markets, the lies, the fraud. I say together, we tear down the wall. Life can be pretty worrying in these high-tech modern times. What with the FBI agent watching you through your webcam and the instability of Krypton currencies. Do you say Krypton currencies? Yeah. Don't invest in Kryptonite, you guys. It's unstable. I mean, it's quite rare though, isn't it? It's probably valuable. Maybe do. Anyway, between you, me, and the FBI dude watching you watch this YouTube video. Hi, Greg. The thing you should really be worrying about is some hacktivist collective roaming the city in cool streetwear and face masks. You might wind up like this random innocent San Francisco citizen who gets identity thefted by hero Marcus Holloway when he hacks their bank account and drains their funds. Why do I need to pay taxes? What the hell? That was the money they were saving so they could go back to college, finally get that qualification, and at long last pursue their dream of becoming a dental hygienist. I mean, it seems likely. But say goodbye to your dreams, random citizen, and whatever plans you had for your life savings, because you've just been screwed over by a guy with a smartphone. Hey, it could be worse. He could have taken a photo of you vomiting with his smartphone and then uploaded it and made it go viral, turning you into some kind of meme, ruining your life that way. See? Modern life, technology, seriously risky. Not with your bitcoins and your blockchains. You say blockchains? Yeah, why do they want to block me? I don't even own any cryptocurrency. Huh? No way. No way! Wow, can't believe we ruined all those people's days and lives and bone integrity. Feel bad now for doing that. Uh, but if you want to make up the karma there, you can make our day by clicking on one of these other videos. So up here, we've got a video about nobodies who are the real heroes. So we're championing the stories of some of the little guys who that we didn't ruin their lives. And down here, we've got a video from Outside Extra about useless enemies that we can't believe killed us. So when they all gang together, they're actually quite dangerous. So maybe don't go around ruining the lives of little enemies 
in future, just some advice. Thanks for watching.